Hello guys, welcome to the P1 Classical Mechanics Lecture Series. So in this lecture, P109.1, I'm going to introduce classical uh, circular motion dynamics. So what is a circular motion is something that we have defined and described in P107.1. P107 lecture series right so we have discussed all that in P107 now our time comes to uh, the application of Newton's laws right which we have learned in 108 and applying that principles into circular motion that's the circular motion dynamics so this is a circular motion dynamics lecture okay So what is a dynamics? So how can you use that information, right? So first of all, the basic thing that you need to know and you need to go through before coming into this lecture is 107, right? If you don't uh, go through 107, you will be uh, lost in space if you don't know the basics. So in 107, we have gone through the acceleration vector. So acceleration vector for a circular particle, right? For a particle moving around i'm going to recap in a very simple manner so if you have a particle like this and some particle other particle which is moving around it in circular orbit just like that then you have you know that there is an acceleration vector so the acceleration vector will have some theta component right so theta component will looks like that so you call this the acceleration a theta and then there is a radial component which is actually in the r cap direction which is in the minus r cap direction because the particle is being pulled to the inside right so there is an uh, in minus r cap direction there is one and other acceleration which you call a r so two components are there for the acceleration right basic understanding so a can be written as a can be written as the vector a can be written as a sum, additive sum of a r in the r cap direction plus a theta in the theta cap direction right very simple now uh, a r was okay the component a r was equal to some r times d theta by dt the whole square in the minus r cap direction right so in the minus r cap direction okay radial component and then there was a theta right a theta was equal to uh, what uh, um, r times d square theta by dt square in the theta cap direction so the two components so uh, d theta by dt is called uh, what d theta by dt is the time rate of change of theta right so that is called angular velocity right so you call that r uh, so this is minus r omega square in the r cap direction and this is uh, what r times d square theta by dt square is d theta by dt is angular velocity so then the second derivative of d theta will be angular acceleration so that is angular acceleration r alpha in the theta cap direction so these are the two things uh, one single thing that we have gone through in the uh, lecture 107 now I'm going to use this I'm going to use this in such a way that we will benefit and we can calculate what is the gravitational uh, what say the time period of moon okay what is the time period of moon that's the point of concern here and so you know that the moon is rotating around the earth right so if you have the earth surface just like that and there is a moon right moon is rotating around the earth sir earth in a circular perfectly almost perfectly circular orbit which you know so this is the case here and we know that there is a force of gravitational force acting between the two right the gravitational force and due to rotation there is acceleration in the radial direction right towards the inside right in the r cap direction or minus r cap direction and there is the uh, component of a theta or theta cap direction there is the acceleration two accelerations and you can clearly understand that the uh, what radial component is being cancelled by the gravitational force so in the radial axis you can see there is the gravitational force attracting on and then there is radial acceleration 
so radial acceleration can be transformed right so acceleration radial acceleration is equal to uh, minus m r omega square right in the r cap direction negative r cap that's why there is a minus sign so it can be you can multiply it with a mass and you get a force right so okay that's something i already i did okay so there is m here so you can come multiply with the mass on both sides and you get f right so it's f in the radial direction now what now you can do is that you know omega so omega or angular frequency omega must be equal to angular velocity omega must be equal to uh, 2 pi by t right angular frequency omega must be equal to 2 pi by t right so you can now what you can do is that so you can substitute that back into this equation so f r must be equal to some minus m r right m r times 2 pi by t the whole square that's 4 pi square by t square so that is in the r cap negative r cap that's why there is a minus sign again so you can do that so you if you substitute that and then you equate it with the gravitational force f gravity right you get it with the gravitational force in the radial direction okay so gravitational force as you remember from the last time so gravitational in 108 we have discussed that so f gravitation must be equal to minus some constant g which is the universal gravitational constant times mass of the moon times mass of the earth by the distance between the two which is r square okay in the negative r cap direction again so you can uh, you can uh, what what you can do is that you can equate them both right fr and fg so this must be equal to fr so that must be equal to minus m r m of the moon times r times 4 pi square by t square okay symbol so if you do that you, now you can do you, do you can cancel the minus signs from both sides you the m of the moon will cancel each other okay just like that so what you get is t t must be equal to uh, square root of because it's t square right i'm taking it to the left side t and you get 4 uh, pi square okay r cube right r cube by uh, g m of earth okay you get that so that's the time period of the oscillation or uh, the circular motion of moon right around the earth uh, it rotates that's the time period okay so if you look here you can see that it doesn't depend upon the mass of the uh, moon so it is independent of the mass of the moon mass of the moon is not in the equation so we will come back to that okay just a moment afterwards why is it so okay what why is it relevant okay that's a very important point i think it's the most important point in this lecture okay so now you can do is that what you can do is that you can substitute back those equations right so t must be equal to substitute the values here so you uh, can clearly see it's 4 pi square times r cube what is the distance between earth and the moon okay center of the earth and to the moon so that is actually you can look it up it's 3 times 8 3.8 okay 3.8 times 10 to the power 8 okay so that's the distance from earth to the moon okay it's out there you can look it up and the r cube so it's a cube okay divided by the gravitational constant g is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the power minus 11 okay 11 with some crazy units times mass of the earth is approximately around 5.9 times 10 to the power 24 kilograms so that's the values right there and if you take out a calculator and you do this and you get a time period which is equal to some 2.35 times 10 to the power 6 seconds so that will be approximately equal to that will be equal to not approximately that will be equal to 8 uh, 27.2 day okay you can divide this whole thing 
by 60 times 60 times 24 that will give you seconds so uh, days so that will be 27.2 days okay that's the time period of rotation of earth around a moon around the earth okay that's the time period so you you see that so from this equation it is very clear that the you move around the earth a moon will move around the earth go in one complete rotation in 27.2 days okay 27.2 days so this is not the actual days because there is a reason for it because earth is moving around the sun as well right so this rotation will actually the displacement will actually cause some delta uh, displacement of the earth will actually cause some additional distance for the moon to travel so that so the total will be 29 point the 29.2 or something like that two days you can look it up you can always look it up so that will be the exact circular motion around the earth for moon and that will be one month of uh, rotation right almost one month of rotation so you get a full moon after every 29.2 days okay we just calculated that okay we just calculated that now i'm going to come to a very important part which is uh, the uh, geostationary sta satellites right so it's uh, geo stationary satellite <laughs> sorry okay so geostationary satellites are something that is rotating around the earth right if you have the earth over here and geostationary satellite is a small satellite or something big that is rotating around the earth in a circular path right with following the exact location on the surface of the earth so it will be the same after some time it will ha be following the same place right this place will be tracked down to this place and that's why it's called geostationary okay that's geostationary if you don't know so a time period of geostationary satellite what should be the time period of oscillation so time period of oscillation must be equal to almost equal to some 23 hours 56 minutes and some four seconds right so if that's the case then you can say that it is a geostationary satellite so this will amount to approximately 861 uh, 64 seconds okay so that will be the total time of rotation time period of rotation around the earth now the mass of the earth we know is 5.9 to 10 raised to 24 so if i need to write it down so it's approximately equal to 5.9 into 10 raised to minus 24 kilograms we have done that earlier okay and the radius of the earth is 6.37 times 10 to the power 6 meters right so that will be the radius of the earth two things now for some mass some geostationary satellite okay we don't know what it is okay some mass so mass of the satellite it doesn't matter what the mass of the satellite is okay we will see to it now so some mass i don't care so let's find out what uh, what the radius should be okay what is the radius for a geostationary satellite what should be the radius permanent radius okay that's the very uh, crucial thing so you can if equate that f gravitation must be equal to f of r radial uh, orbital as force right orbit uh, a, a radial force radial force of the orbital which is m times a r right radial acceleration times okay mass so you can equate that so you get uh, minus g m of earth m of satellite divided by r square right r of the satellite square must be equal to minus m of the satellite times omega which is the acceleration here so it's omega square r of the satellite so that will be very easy so minus sign minus sign just the same cancels and m mass mass of the satellite cancels each other and you get the radius must be equal to right radius of the satellite must be equal to some 
gme by omega square the whole 1 by 3 because it's r cube right so r square and r r will combine and form r cube so it's 1 by 3 okay so uh, omega will be 2 pi by t right omega will be 2 pi by t so you can do that so omega is equal to 2 pi by t right t so t is the time period of oscillation is we calculated that the total for geosynchronous it should be 86164 seconds right you can substitute that back into this equation and you can find out so it's 2 pi by 86164 seconds so that will be give you 7.3 use a calculator times 10 to the power minus 5 seconds second inverse okay because it's omega which is angular frequency so that is 1 by second okay so that's it now let's substitute the value of omega into this equation so rs will be some gs which is equal to going to do this here so this is equal to you can do this here anyways so rs must be equal to some g which is 6.67 times 10 to the power minus 11 times mass of the earth which is 5.9 times 10 to the power 24 divided by 7.3 times 10 to the power minus 5 the whole is to 1 by 3 right so that's the radius required so that will be that will account for the radius will give you 4.22 right 4.22 times 10 to the power uh, what 10 to the power um, 7 meters okay 7 meters so that will be the radius okay what have we found out so this is actually exactly almost equal to 6.62 times the radius of the earth okay so it's, it's 6 almost 6 times 6 and a half times bigger than the radius of the earth so what do we found out so this what we found out here is for a satellite right a geosynchronous satellite rotating around the earth right earth just like that to keep track of the surface right just like that it must be doesn't matter what the mass is right if you look back you can see that in the equation there is no dependence of the mass right mass of the satellite doesn't matter this is the radius so mass doesn't matter but whatever the mass it could be one ton it will be two tons as long as you get to that orbit to that radius doesn't matter what the mass is if you have that radius then you rotate around the sun in a tracking the exact surface around the sun it will be a geosynchronous satellite geosynchronous orbit so in that orbit it must be it must be for any mass it must be 6.62 times the radius of the earth we know the radius of the earth right so it's around 10 to the power what uh, 6 around 10 to the power 6.37 into 10 to the power 6 meters so anyways at that 6 this these exact value a range for that okay a particular range for that some bandwidth so if if, you, if it is in if any particle heavy or light or anything like that if it is in that range then definitely it will move with the synchronous orbit which is almost precise to the surface right it will rotate just like that tracking the surface okay even after some time it will be in the same surface if it, it is above the north america region or in the south america region it will be in the same region for as long as it rotates so that's the use of this calculation very simple calculation for something that is very crucial right so you know what the orbit must be okay that's i think that's a very informative thing and doesn't matter the mass you can pull up a ton over there or a or a gram a gram the both thing things will follow the same track okay so it doesn't matter what the mass is thank you thank you for watching keep subscribing and referring it to your friends i think i'm doing a good job right now okay